Hey, welcome to another episode of the Film Life Vlog. I'm so glad you guys joined me. You know what? I've been shooting film for over three years now, and I must say that I've pretty much shot most of the formats and most of uh, the film cameras that you can think of from rangefinders to point and shoots to medium format to SLRs. But there's one particular class of film cameras that I've not touched so far that are not large format cameras and that is the instant cameras. I've never ever shot with those before. And over the past episodes, I have been teasing uh, you guys regarding me starting to shoot with uh, my Polaroid uh, cameras. I do have a, a small decent collection of, of Polaroid cameras. I have about 10 of them. So it just so happens that last week I went to Calgary and I went into the camera store in Cal Calgary. Those of you in Calgary, you know about the camera store. And at the store I found some instant um, film for Polaroids and I uh, decided to pick a couple up. I was only able to pick up the SX70 because I was really pressed for time. The store was about to close. I really didn't have the time to think straight. And to be honest with you, I also just wanted to get through with it and go check out the other stuff that they had. One thing that I noticed at the camera store now is that they have a much broader selection of uh, film stuff, film photography stuff which was really exciting for me because back in the day when I go there they only have like a couple aisles dedicated to film photography stuff but now they have a whole bunch of things that I've never seen before from darkroom uh, tools and it, it looks it actually looks like more companies are producing more darkroom stuff but I digress so the beautiful thing is that I was able to pick up these lovely lovely Polaroid uh, instant film and I am so excited guys to just share this experience with you guys. I've never shot with this before. I am really really stoked about this guys as you can imagine. I'm pretty much a novice when it comes to this so you're gonna learn this experience with me. But wait a second, this isn't right. <laughs> That's more like it guys, that's more like it, that feels more natural now. I'm wearing my Polaroid uh, t-shirt which I have shown you guys in a few videos already and I'm ready to rock. Let's do this. So for SX70 type cameras I have this one here which is the Polaroid Pronto Land camera. I mean look at this beauty. Right, just 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 a really nice unique look. I pretty much know everything about SLRs and all the other types, but when it comes to instant cameras, I know next to nothing. So I'm going to uh, research what this does. I'm going to research what that does, and I will be sharing that with you guys. You guys are lucky because. I get to do all the work for you. So why don't you reward me for all my hard work and just click the like button on this video and also click the subscribe button guys. That would really help. So you can see that this camera obviously has the primary lens here and like a rangefinder or a point and shoot camera it has a secondary lens here which is connected to the viewfinder that you see right here. It's a really tiny viewfinder. When you look through, you will see just a square display that's basically coming from that. And over here, I'm actually not sure what that does, but I have a feeling that this is some form of a light sensor. I may be wrong. If I'm right or whatever this is, I will just put the label right there. And over here, you can see that this dial just turns from dark to light. As you spin it, it turns from dark to light, which I think controls the aperture because that will control how dark or light your image looks. I think that's what this is. 
So I'll put the label right on that right now. This tab here, you just push it forward and that lowers the cartridge slot where you feed in the cartridge, right? Just like that. The other camera that I have is this one step over here. What a lovely one. And it actually matches my shirt. See? It actually matches. Look at that. Similar design. Imagine me walking out in public with this shirt holding this camera. That would be pretty dope, right? I think that would be actually quite sick. But here it is. This is a one step. This is the other SX70 camera that I have. I have another one that's um, it's, it looks like this but it doesn't have the stripes but I decided to uh, go with these because as you can see here I have two types of film here I have color and black and white for SX70 so I'm going to load one of the cameras with color and the other with uh, black and white I decided to test both to see how they perform let's load the cameras shall we now look at the back of the box here and Basically, this has eight exposures, and I bought this for 27 Canadian dollars. I think the folks in the States, you probably spend less US dollars, that is, for this. And it says that it's ASA 160, so pretty much ISO almost 200, sort of. So that means that I have to be careful how I expose this because it won't be very sensitive to um, like a darker uh, settings so I have to make sure probably this is best shot in daylight or if you have some artificial lighting indoors that can you know uh, light up your subject pretty good it says that the photos develop in five to ten minutes which is which is pretty decent it's best stored, refrigerated, and uh, shooting tips are inside. So you know what? I have a feeling that I might be able to actually learn everything about shooting with my cameras just from this box. Alrighty. And if you look right here, it just says specifically that um, this will not work with the new iType cameras because the fact is that those ones already have the batteries built into the camera whereas the old Polaroid cameras did not have the batteries built into the camera but the batteries are actually built into the cartridge that you put into your camera so the camera de derives its power source for shooting for firing the shutter from the battery that is built into this it's sort of a waste I think the iType camera idea is actually much better because you can reuse your batteries. I cannot tell you the number of times I have purchased Polaroid cameras only to find out that the, the battery, there's an empty cartridge in, inside and it's been inside for many, many years and the battery actually still works, which is the weirdest thing. And if, if only the, those batteries were built into the camera, then you save on, I mean, it's, it's conservation, right? It's actually better for the, for the environment to have the batteries built in. You don't have to replace your batteries every single time you reuse your cartridge. I mean, only eight exposures, you have to throw that battery away, right? And the battery is still pretty good. And on top of that, the new iType cameras also have cheaper, the film is cheaper since the battery is not built in. It's cheaper, right? All you have to do is replace your batteries and you're good to go, right? So I, I actually prefer those than the old format. So if you want to get into this stuff, I mean, by all means, go for the iType cameras. Unless you want the retro vibes and an old camera effect. You know what? I'm going to start with the black and white. And I'm just going to go ahead and open this up. Ooh, this is exciting guys. I've never done this before. This is so excited. And look at that shiny, shiny, shiny piece of gear. Now I know some of you guys are into packaging, so why don't I give you a nice treat? And just listen to this. Ooh.
Like a candy bar, guys. Like a candy bar. What does it say? Make a splash. Use the flash. Unfortunately, I had a flash that goes with one of my cameras. However, the flash is not working so well because uh, the terminals are all corroded. So unfortunately, I don't, I don't have a flash, but I have the lighting kit that I'm using to light this up here. It's a continuous lighting kit, but that's what I'm, I'm planning to use to light up my family before I take photos of them. But this is so cool, guys. There's a tab here, I'm not sure if I should remove it, I'm going to just pause this video and I'm going to do a little bit of research now. Because with this comes the instruction and the instruction is actually in there, right there. So I'm just going to cut this open and I'm going to read what's in there and I will continue this video right after. So from what I've read, I think I can just go ahead and and get on with this process. But first, I'm going to open this front end here. I think it's important to make sure that the rollers are clean from what I've read. And it seems like my rollers are pretty clean. As you can see right there, so there shouldn't be any issues with the rollers per se. If you look carefully, it says you insert, it gives you a little guide as to which direction to insert. You see the little arrow and it says that insert this in facing upwards this way. So this is my first time guys. If I mess up guys it's it's pardonable because <laughs> I've never done this before. So apparently you're supposed to push this in all the way until you hear a click. Ooh, that was a very strong click. And then I'm going to shut this and it's supposed to eject the dark slide which was on top there. Nothing. I guess it doesn't look ejected automatically. Let's see if... Let's see if it would eject it. So I had to do some trickery to get the slide out. It didn't work as advertised, at least on this camera. I don't know if it's the fault of the camera or maybe the camera is just old. I'm gonna see if it works now. I moved the dark slide out, so... Okay, nothing is coming out. So, nothing is coming out. Anyways, this is already exposed, so no luck on that. Let's try this one here. Let's see if this one will be any better. I'm gonna push this in. Okay, didn't make any noise, any sound. Whoa, that's a working camera. Okay, now that was a working camera, right? Okay, let's take a selfie and let's see, smile for the camera. I'm going to adjust the exposure compensation and Okay, that's how it looks for now. They said not to shake it for some reason. I thought, I thought it was meant to be shaken like a Polaroid picture. And this is the other one that was practically wasted. Oh, I see an image developing. Look carefully guys. Can you see the image forming? Look. It's forming as we speak. That is so cool, guys. Now that is cool. It's actually working, I don't know. I don't know, I don't want to disturb it too much. 
It's a bit blurry. I think it is blurry. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and uh, take pictures of my family. Hey, so unfortunately, it looks like um, every photo that I take is not turning out so well because that Polaroid camera does not have a flash unit attached. And since I'm taking uh, photos indoors and not outdoors because it's winter time, um, I'm not really getting a good exposure. So far, all that I've gotten has been terrible. So I went online and I ordered a flash unit that actually matches my camera so I'm gonna do a quick unboxing and let's see how that goes quite heavy too. It's a really nice hefty size. Look at that unit, that's the bottom of it. I hope it actually works from the back. So I decided that, you know what, if I'm gonna buy a flash unit, I might as well buy one that's gonna match my camera here. And I managed to find that on eBay. Check this out guys. It matches my camera. And I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fit that on top. You can see there's a little slot up here and that card actually fits, should fit right on top. Should just sit on top, clicks in. Look at that beauty, guys. It's the same model, beautiful. It's the same design made for this camera and now I'm in business. As long as this works, I'm gonna test it to make sure that it actually works. Okay, so I have put batteries in and I can hear the whine of this charging, but I, when I look, this, the light is not on yet. It's been a couple of minutes already and I'm getting a little concerned, but it'll probably come on. Maybe my batteries are not strong enough. I'm not sure. This is supposed to light up by now. Okay, I'm gonna press it and see if it, the flash unit discharges. Nope, nothing discharged. I think the batteries I used are a bit too weak. I'm gonna replace the batteries with something newer. And I'll see if that works. But this looks amazing, guys. Look at that. That actually looks pretty good. I haven't cleaned it up yet, but it looks amazing. Hey, you know what? I think it was the batteries because when I changed the batteries to um, Duracell, Duracell batteries, guys, listen to it now. Just listen to that. That's the sweet sound of charging. This should light up soon if it actually works. It's charging up. It's almost there. Oh, the weight is killing me. That's taken a long time, guys, to charge up. That flash unit is, it must be really powerful, cause I mean, listen to the sound. I'm hoping this bring this closer to the mic. And that's the sound I hear. But yet, the light is not on. And it's taking much longer than a normal flash unit would. It just keeps on whining. Did I see a light? No, nope, no light yet. That's so weird. Even the sound is like pulsating. And listen to it now. OK, 
Okay, I'm gonna press the button to see if it will actually flash. Let's see. Oh! The flash went off, guys. So I guess the bulb is faulty. Okay. I think it's charged up again. Okay, I'm gonna try and take a picture of my wife right now. Who's gonna complain? But I'll see if she'll be willing to take a photo right now. Look what just happened, guys. After I discharged the first flash, the light came on. That is so weird. That is so weird. I'm gonna try and convince my wife to take a photo. She must have photography fatigue right now. We'll see. <laughs> So that's my wife, and uh, she's gonna try and take a, a photo now. And uh, let's see, let's see how this works. So I'm gonna stay maybe about um, five feet away from her, just so I'm past that minimum distance from her. And um, I'm gonna set this lightness uh, setting to just somewhere in the middle, which is just around here. Okay. And now I'm going to try and take this photo. If everything works, we're going to have a nicely exposed image right now. Okay, let's see, babe. There we go. <laughs> that, actually, that actually happened, guys. If this works, guys, then we're in business. I haven't taken a Polaroid since I was 16. That's a long time ago. Come talk to them. I'll talk to you. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see how that photo is. Maybe. So when you take a follower photo, <laughs> so when you take a follower, are you supposed to shake it like a photo? Yes, that's what you do. I hear you're not supposed to. Oh. So you just leave it uh, just to sit for about five minutes or so. There are two main things that I learned from this experience. The first is that if I were to do this again, I'll probably shoot with a 600 type camera because I am an opportunistic photographer. I oftentimes shoot my family, my kids, and I wait for the opportunity to present itself when, when they're doing something cute, something that I feel I need to remember, we need to remember that particular location. I just grab a camera, whichever camera is handy, and I will take a picture of my kids. And because I do that, I often find myself shooting indoors and in low light situations. And because the SX70 cameras have a lower ISO rating, that becomes a bit problematic. I mean, you can see from this sample, for example, that I took of my kids, that even though the flash unit was on, I mean, I was still getting results like these where the background is really dark, even that my subjects are not that well exposed. And they were only like five feet away from me with the flash unit and still not very well exposed, right? And also this one here that I took of my wife and you can see that it's it wasn't like really dark in there, but yet you see how dark the background is. I mean, she, I would say she is, heck, the exposure on her is, is decent, but the exposure in the background is, I mean, it's, it's really blacked out there. I would have loved for some detail to at least pop out a bit, and I did not get that. So if I were to do this again, I'll certainly be using the 600 type camera because the ISO um, of the film that the 600 type cameras uses is in excess of ISO 600. So that, that means it's more sensitive to light. Unfortunately for me, I do have an, a 600 type camera. And that's this lovely camera here. I mean, look at this beauty. It almost looks like a modern car. <laughs> I mean, look at that shape of it. And to open it up, there's this little button here you press and it just pops out like that. Quite futuristic, this one. This is the one that I'll most likely be shooting with the next time I do it. I do this. 
and there will be a next time because I think this was a big learning experience for me and I learned a lot of lessons and the second one being that my rollers the film rollers even though they looked clean I should have probably cleaned them a bit more thoroughly I should have given them a clean because what happens when your rollers are not completely clean is you end up with see those streaks right there and that's that they say is a symptom of uh, the rollers not being completely clean and then I also found out that see this little dot right there that could happen when um, you don't allow your exposed film once it's shot right once it's developing you need to keep it in a darker place for it to to actually set in I didn't do that so you end up with the, the picture developing and you having spots in it like that so that's another lesson I learned is you know keep your rollers clean and make sure you follow the rules so um, I'll certainly do it again I mean it was fun it was fun at the end of it I, fi I think I figured it out I got I got a good understanding I, I think my brain finally switched from normal film cameras to how an instant camera should work and I'm glad that I tried this Anyways, I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and as always, stay safe.